once again welcome back to this channel and this is Catchman Sandy and you're watching Infolink Studios where passion yields action and facts beat fiction and the truth takes it all and today we want to discuss about uh, issues that are affecting this nation currently uh, politically and uh, socially. Before we get there if you're new to this channel please hit the, that subscribe button and like share uh, so that you can get to learn your views. So let's get back to the main topic. So uh, what is the political situation in Kenya currently as we speak? Let's look at uh, Kenya uh, currently and uh, look at uh, who is controlling the political uh, space. The political space in Kenya and it's a general, it's general knowledge. Both of us know that political space is controlled by uh, the sitting government and uh, the opposition. But to a greater extent, the opposition has taken a good chunk of the political negotiation in this particular uh, state. Uh, look at the uh, the organized demos that uh, government is having sleepless nights based on those particular uh, schedules that have been put outside there to the public by the opposition leader. You remember, some time back, the opposition leader went as as outrageous as uh, uh, you might imagine by even announcing that uh, Mondays and, and Fridays would be public holidays and, you know, like always, uh, the country was getting into a phrase. But let's look at it from a uh, possibility or the, from uh, the angle of possibility. A big question which I ask you as a viewer to share with me if you think it's possible or not possible. Has Raila the ability to mention a, a, a day or a public holiday? We know so well that our constitution speaks uh, to that particular uh, possibility so vividly well that it is only within the mandate of um, a minister serving the cabinet secretary or within the position of the president himself to declare a particular day a public day and it has to be followed up by a particular write-up and actually sometimes the approval of parliament and legislations that also matter in that particular uh, direction but um, it came to us a surprise that uh, Raila managed to announce or rather go public decree uh, on particular days of this of the week to be public holidays in Kenya. Let's look at how that will play out when those particular days uh, or other people fail to go to jobs or uh, maybe uh, businesses are, are interfered with, interrupted or, or stuff because maybe, you know, the amount of idle people in, the, in Kenya are, are alarming big and uh, idleness begets that kind of of frenzy when you are given it's like a bonus you're given a holiday and you know you're not going out there to work and you have a reason to say i didn't go to work because there were, it's, it was a holiday and uh, believe you me uh, a good number of people in kenya really love to have the demos run uh, every day expect a few a few who are very much <coughs> tied to their jobs uh, who are a little uh, more belling to, to their jobs but a good number of people uh, who go to jobs and probably just because they want to defend their salary or people who are hustlers and probably do not have a stable job or what they need is to go outside there and maybe uh, juggle the liver here and there. If a job comes, fine. If it doesn't, uh, so fine. They'll find a way of surviving that day. These people will find uh, it very possible and very comfortable for them to waste that idle time to go outside there in the streets and do the demos where it break into other people. And it forms a very big group of people who then turn out to be the looters and the massive destructors of uh, the already built property. But uh, that another time, okay, uh, my, my conscience tells me that uh, uh, Raila has put a lot of energy into making sure that the demos uh, escalate to something bigger. What do you think is behind Raila's mind? Okay, if you have some a view that is different or contrary to the opinion that I'm giving, please do feel uh, free to share in the comment section so that you get to see, share part this discussion some other time. But ask me, I will tell you that uh, Raila is a very strategic leader, a political leader that has always stayed in this particular space for quite some time, and whatever direction that is taking this particular country is uh, a direction that will definitely benefit him and benefit his particular course come 2027. I am not saying that uh, Raila is running uh, for presidency come 2027, but I'm also not running away from that fact because it's a possibility. Look at the constitution. The constitution is still giving Raila that particular possibility of running 
for uh, the elections come 2027. Uh, the age was a factor sometime, but you know the consumer does not necessarily talk about age of a presidential candidate. So it may be hot air, as it said, it may not have hold a lot of water. So then is an eligible candidate should he present his name to run against whoever. Of course, I know William uh, Ruto, the current president, is the most eligible and most likely candidate to run in 2022. Alongside some other uh, people, uh, let's say Kalonzo, if fronted by the Azimio, or if they break ranks with Azimio, because as things stand, there is likelihood that uh, Stephen Kalonzo Musioka may not be the man uh, uh, to carry uh, the flag in Azimio as a joint team. And if he does, then I want to think that uh, that he will be doing outside the Azimio bracket, uh, owing to the fact that Raila Odinga's presence in Azimio still gives him legitimacy of uh, uh, coming up and raise, raising above uh, other leaders to be the presidential candidate. Martha Karwe is an iron lady, as, his na as her name suggests, but uh, uh, under Raila Molodinga, and if a uh, good strategy is not struck, then I think Mata Karua will be um, will be a good leaker and remain uh, under control um, in the shadows of Raila Molodinga in the in the run for presidency in twenty in twenty twenty seven. Um, on the other side, maybe people like Kamudavadi and uh, Wetangula and uh, maybe uh, young guys like Sakaja, you know, like. Uh, Sifuna. Don't forget Babu Wino, who is also coming up as a very strong person uh, and a most likely force to contend for presidency sometime, even if it's not 2027, but sometime in this particular nation. So uh, the strategy here looks like really trying to make sure that he whips people left, right, and center and uh, keep keep the liver juggle, you know, uh, keep the, the pot boiling so that by the time 2027 is here, uh, he is most relevant. Remember, after uh, Raila Molodinga lost to Dr. William Ruto, and after the Supreme Court uh, pronounced themselves uh, on the on the, <coughs> on, on the case against uh, the win of uh, Ruto, uh, then Raila, if not if it were not for his uh, un unpredictability, then at that point he could have gone. You know, he could have uh, missed out from on the public scope and uh, nobody could have known whether Raila is coming back or he is not coming back. But right here he has decided to make sure that things normalize, things get back to course by creating another another force. You remember Raila is one of the guys who has been known for recreating himself. No, he dies and comes back. He looks like he's died. You remember when he went to Kenya? Then he came up with the uh, Kido Kidogo Huduma number thing. He, you know, there was the launch of Uduma number and Uduma Uduma. Then he came back again and did the BBI, which again hits hard. He went to the counties, despite the fact that he could not get the threshold that he really wanted. No, the court deduced that there was a lot of bureaucracy in terms of reaching the numbers and making sure that he gets what is this, uh, rightful for that kind of work again. But he managed to win the cloud again. He had a good number of people. Uh, uh, around him and uh, the BBI looked vo very very legit actually very legit that if you were not keen to scrutinize it deeper then it was one of the most legit affronted uh, by the opposition leader and that time uh, in, in, in alliance with the running government the Uhuru government after the split of the Uhuru Ruto so uh, we can never dispute that and therefore uh, Raila's strategy is to make sure that things are working. It may, it may not necessarily to take over government because he knows so well that it, a takeover is something he can never risk. You know, William Ruto is not uh, as soft as some other president, probably as Uru Kenyatta if you want to compare him. Ruto is an iron fist himself. So, and Raila knows because Raila has served with William Ruto in the cabinet. Raila has served with William Ruto in the strategic uh, platform when they were running in the same, in the same party, a political party in Odium, that is in 2007. And uh, he knows, he has also served against William Ruto uh, and well, he's felt it because uh, working with the government hand in hand in the period approaching or unfolding to 2022 election and Ruto working like a lone ranger in and outside, you could call it outside government, or within government but with a lot of, um, a lot of, a lot of, of uh, shoulder brushing with the government. And, and to an extent that uh, he was more or less an outcast of the government.
but he still managed to score uh, whether legitimate or illegitimate we may not be able to tell but here we have William Ruto uh, having been declared both by the chairman of the IEBC and also by the courts after all these uh, hula baloo and the petitions by uh, the Azimio team so it is clear that William Ruto is uh, that tough person Raila might not just want to assume that uh, he may that may succumb to his theatrics in the in politics today so that therefore uh, tells us so clear that the strategy of Raila Molodinga is not necessarily to go and do a takeover uh, in in the state house uh, there is no way he would do it uh, no it's quite impossible but then he wants to make sure that he runs this particular motion and notion and uh, it creates a lot of delusion in our minds running into the year 2027 so that he remains relevant so that by 2027 if he feels that he may not be able to run himself because maybe age or health or or factors of that kind then he may choose to front somebody who probably may be his benefactor of that kind of a prepared ground yeah if you feel that my idea I can leave your comments Uh, down there so that we can also verify and uh, see how we can shape up our discussion again so in the next video please we're going to share uh, why ruto must be a worried man why ruto must be a worried man so if you want to watch that that particular video please do not fail to subscribe and also do not fail to hit that notification bell so that every time we produce videos of this nature you are the first one to get it thank you so much for staying tuned and